Welcome to Mish Music Talk with Michelle Weir in powerful conversations with singers, players, vocal groups, and industry professionals from around the world. This podcast isn't just about the music, it's about life and who the artist really is on the inside. Hello, and welcome back to the Mish Music Talk podcast, session number 11. I just had such a nice conversation with Janice Siegel. She was in New York at home. I was in Los Angeles at home. Normally, we record with audio only. She insisted we actually have a visual on Skype, and we were both basically in our casual at-home mode, and it was just a lot of fun. I think everyone listening must know of Janice and her work with the Manhattan Transfer very, very well. Um, And you probably know that group has been around for a couple of years now. We're talking 40, 40, that's a lot of years. And they've done, of course, many dozens of um, uh, recordings and won all kinds of Grammys and, you know, television shows and all kinds of stuff associated with that. But Janice her world, her life, her music is so much broader than just the Manhattan Transfer. It's so much more multidimensional, and you'll learn more about that as you listen. But uh, she's got Grammy Awards for arranging for her solo CDs. Um, She's working with uh, Bobby McFerrin's Voice District group. She's working with um, a couple of other fun groups that you'll hear about shortly. And um, she loves food. She loves life. She is not watching the game of life. She's playing the game of life big time. Let's start by playing part of a track from one of her current groups, the Hey Kinche Trio. This is from their CD, Honey and Air. Then I met you Oh, what a lovely time it was How sublime it was too Hello, Janice. How are you? Hello, Michelle Weir. <laughs> How is Glendale, California? Glendale is pretty nice. I uh, I got to tell you, I have got some color in my backyard. I've got trees in bloom, fruit trees. I've got my roses are, you yes. know, it's at that place where they're about ready to bloom all at once. The first Spring has sprung in Glendale, apparently. It really kind of has. And um, I even planted some kale and Swiss chard this year f- for the first time in years because I've been so busy. And I, I just gave myself a little um, break to plant things in the ground. And that makes me very happy. What about you? How's New York? Well, it, it snowed this morning here in New York. Uh, and it was beautiful. I have to say, um, but it's it's all stopped now, and uh, nothing really stuck. 
except I get to look down from my apartment into a little garden, and you can see the, the sprinkling of snow there. It's nice. It's winter here in New York still. But you did have summer, for example, on Christmas Day and things like that. I know. Right? It, it's been a wacky, wacky winter. Yes. I have to say. There was that one huge blizzard, and then the next day it was 60. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Miss, uh, Ms. Janice Siegel, you know, I could spend about the whole next hour and a half just going through all of the myriad things you do and have done in life that are inspirational, are impressive in terms of your great volume of work with a Manhattan transfer, your volume of work as a solo artist that maybe not everybody knows about as much as they know that about the transfer, but they'll hopefully hear more about it today, your work uh, on various television things over the years, your arranging work, Grammy award-winning arranger you are, um, you know, all the other groups that you're involved with, Bobby McFerrin's Voice Istra, the Jalala group, which I... And that, oh, and the re, uh, recun, oh, you just told me how to pronounce it. Hey, Kinchi. Hey, Kinchi. <laughs> it looks yeah, like. Yeah, the R is an H. <laughs> for okay. <starters>. Okay. <laughs> I need to work on my Portuguese. Always. But I heard some of that online, and it is so pretty. It's Thank you. So I should send you one, and I shall. Please. I, would, I will. I shall send you one. I would love it. Yes. So, of course, we could start uh, by talking about the most obvious, which is the transfer. But instead of that, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, thinking creatively, I think we should start with talking about meditation. We are meditating buddies. Yes. You, I can't thank you enough for turning me on to that uh, app. Yes. And the, and the talking app. about an app called Insight Timer. Yes, it is a, a really nice one, and um, it's fun because you get to know all the thousands of people that are meditating with you at the same time. You, there's all sorts of um, guided meditations you can call upon, and you can. Have What's friends. your favorite? What's your favorite one? I, you know, I haven't really done that much of the guided meditations because I like to delude myself into thinking that I could actually just simply focus on my breath or, That's awesome. or yeah. you know, and make it work, which in reality is like, I get, you know, 2% actual mindful meditation in, and mm -hmm. the rest of it is me telling my mind to shut up, go back, Michelle, <laughs> go back, focus on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what about you? There is well, I like I love the singing bowls. Mm. It's twenty minutes of singing bowls, and uh, the, and also I think there's crickets in the background. <laughs> I find that very. I find the music like the just the very ambient music uh, nice. Also, there's an incredible. Uh, guided meditation about breathing from um, Thich Nhat Han. Am I pronouncing yes, that correctly? Yes, that Who I person. Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Um, his voice alone puts me in a trance. Mm. You know, right away. But I just love. I keep. You know, uh, wherever I am, in an airport or you know, uh, out out hiking which is how I first discovered this app, you can, you can just set the timer for 20 minutes and it has the bells in the front and the, uh, in the back. It's great. Yeah, it um, is neat. And um, I think we can share with people that we went on a hike one day and we stopped and meditated together. Yes. As some people may hear that and go, oh, that's very California or, you know, something. But... Um, it was nice. It was, it was really beautiful. Peaceful. I loved it. Yeah. 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 Me too. So um, you're involved in so much. Um, is there, what's your most exciting, fun project at this moment? Ooh. Ooh. Well, I would have to say at this very moment, the most exciting thing that I've been involved in and will be continued to be involved in is this uh, Leonard Bernstein project that um, I did as the guest of Nils Lundgren, who is a uh, Swedish trombonist and singer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And he contacted me out of the blue. I'm, I was a big fan of his and asked me if I'd like to join him on a recording um, of Leonard Bernstein's music uh, arranged by Vince Mendoza. And I, I hesitated about, well, I don't know, a half a second. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I went to Cologne, and we recorded there. And, of course, the music, gathering the music together was so much fun because we, it was really Nils and myself and Vince that were gathering this whole pile of amazing music together and then sifting through it, along with the help of uh, Siggy Locke, who's the head of ACT Records. That's Nils' uh, record label. How refreshing is it to actually have input from a record company that isn't just just business and just numbers? I mean, that yeah. was that in itself was was refreshing. But uh, Nils was so generous with me. I ended up having three like features on his record, and uh, working with Vince for the first time was thrilling as well. And then we ended up doing the concert live with members of the Berlin Philharmonic. And uh, we'll be doing it again in Stockholm in May, and hopefully mm. next year as well. That is really neat. Um, I did come across a promotional video uh, a couple of nights ago or something that Nils did regarding this project. Yeah. So I, so I saw uh, you in the studio singing and heard you. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautifully done, you know, promo video if, if someone wants to Google it. Um, what's the name of the... CD. The name of the uh, CD is Some Other Time, and it's also out on vinyl. Oh. Which is <laughs> very nice. And um, it's on ACT, ACT Records. Okay. And I think it's on iTunes and also available on Amazon. And we'll be performing it live, uh, you know, here, hither and thither, mostly in Europe. Mm-hmm. Any particular dates coming up that you know of or? yeah there is i mean the may date is pretty is settled and that is in stockholm sweden and it is let me just because it's right before my son's graduation that's how i, <laughs> I know that it's um the 20th of, of may it's a friday night so all your swedish fans all right, everyone. Well, all the non-Swedish <laughs> fans, too. What a good reason to go to Sweden. Yes, it is. In May. Why not? In May. So beautiful. Great. Speaking of spring and snow melting, then about that group, the Manhattan Transfer, um, you guys, of course, have been through some very serious changes recently. And um, I know with Tim's passing, obviously, this is a... Um, it was a powerfully sad, um, you know, moment in time, and you went through a mor- mourning period. I remember your concerts around that time were in tribute largely to Tim and so on, and there's been a little bit of time that has passed now, a couple of years, I think almost, is it, or a year and a half? Yeah, it's two years. It's two years. still pretty fresh. Yeah. But I also, on the good side of things, you've got one of the most wonderful talents and human beings on the planet filling the shoes of Tim Hauser, and that is Trist Curlis, yes. also known from the group Impact, also known as a wonderful live recording engineer, um, you know, sound person for all kinds of groups, including Take Six. His and talents so just don't end. Yeah, he, he's down, he, down end. Yeah, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy and a terrific musician, just amazing. And he was Tim Sub when Tim was uh, ill and out, mm-hmm. and um, and he's been there for us in the most crucial moments. Yes. and he's just become a, a permanent member of the group. So uh, I, I uh, from afar, have this feeling of a new new energy and new excitement, new life. I know you're planning a a, a CD, a new CD that w- it's the first one since the Chikoria songbook. Right? Exactly, right. And yes, we are in the planning stages. We have, uh, there are two ideas that we're very, very excited about. Uh, and 
I don't know which one is going to happen first, to be honest, at this at this juncture. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, a new recording has to be happening because we have to present Trist as the new member and see. I mean, for us, it's a journey of seeing what this new collaboration is 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 all about. You know, Trist has to add his energies and his expertise and his feelings and thoughts into the the souffle, as it were. You know, we have to fold him in gently. <laughs> and then we see what this newest our incarnation of the Manhattan Transfer is. Mm-hmm. So it's it's still evolving? It's still evolving, I would say, yes. As Trist, I think, becomes more comfortable as a member, as a full member, I mean, it, it, he's making an emotional transition, in a way, mm-hmm. from sub to, I mean, the the horror of Tim's passing and realizing, you know, he, Tim can't be replaced. I mean, he just can't. He, he was the founder and the leader of our group for 40 some odd years. And, you know, he has to really feel his oats, too. So it's it's a very, being in a group is a very interesting process. Mm-hmm. I have to say a life process. Because you become a family dynamic. Absolutely. And um, I was just chatting with Kim Nazarian from uh, New York Voices, and we were saying the same thing. They also have had a long tenure, as you guys have, but not quite as long. I mean, Man- Manhattan Transfer is truly the most um prominent, historically important contemporary vocal group in the jazz and and pop music realm sort of combined. And um, the the wealth of of history and and music um, and uh, stories, I'm sure, is is plentiful. Oh, the stories. Oh. (laughs) Let's let's hear a a story. (laughs) You, You can pick your favorite angle. It could be about your your dear, dear friend Tim, mm. or your worst nightmare gig, <laughs> or your favorite? Well, I, there are many stories I just can't tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> and But, I, I mean, I, I always come back to um, the Grammy tele- telecast where we did Birdland. We performed Birdland. And it was at Radio City Music Hall in my hometown. And... I can't, I mean, it was excitement beyond anything I had experienced up until then, for sure. But I don't know if you know, but in, in, uh, in, in Radio City Music Hall, there's an there's a, a elevator, stage elevator. And the stage actually starts at the basement and can come up to audience level. And for the telecast, that's how the director had us starting so we were down in the basement with our band, ready to go. And I think Chuck Mangione was sitting in with us, I think, because he was up for um, Feel So Good or some, one of his big records. Mm-hmm. So he was playing Birdland with us. Um, and we started Birdland down in the basement. There was the dong, 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 dong. Yeah. And we came up to this live telecast and this full house audience and you could hear the audience start to roar and roar and then all of a sudden bam we were up and the lights were on and the cameras were there and the the people were there and and then right after that we won the grammy for Bur- for birdland wow yeah it was it was a show business high it really was. it feels <laughs> somehow godlike or something you it know, was just an amazing heavenly. experience and may, but may i say this about that the awards, the Grammys, whatever, they're really terrific. It's great to be um, it's great to be admired and acknowledged by your peers and by the public. But I keep those things in the background. They're all away um, because I like to focus on the future and what's happening now. And I think being a musician and being an artist is, you, it is a tendency to look at those and sort of fall back and be complacent about things. And um, I don't know, it's just the way I am. 
But I just, uh, I just learned something from from what you said. Just you know that you'd rather focus on the future, and if we were going to talk a little bit about, you know, psychology of living life joyfully, might we say that that you know you you found a a primary key to that, right? Don't rest on your laurels. Don't worry about the past. Don't fret about the future. But just focus on you know, the yes. good path that you're looking well, forward to it's rather day, than counting your Grammy Awards. It's the day's work. It's like, what's happening in the next five minutes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Am I going to go practice? Am I going to go learn a new song? Am I going to practice my Portuguese? Am I going to, you know, am I going to go out and hear music? Am I going to... And living life is important too, I think, on that note, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's there's a lot to be said for practicing and focusing on music, but to be a, an artist, I think you have to also live, and all of that, all that that entails. <laughs> you, you're obviously a hard worker, which sounds dry and not so fun. But I mean, to learn all the, all the Portuguese and the Brazilian group, and to write the arrangements for the Manhattan Transfer, and to learn the Nils Lundgren music and prepare for those. I mean, all these things that you're doing, plus you're taking care uh, of your young adult darling son, and, you know, enjoying life with him. And then I see um, via Facebook, often, um, some posts from you about food and cooking and uh, restaurants and, uh, you know, friends and family whom you're hanging out with and doing things with. It's amazing. Um, And I don't want to say hard worker, but I mean, there is that aspect about it, yet you find a way to do it with such joie de vivre, you know, and such joy. How, how does that happen? How is that for well, you? Well, I, th- I think I, I think uh, I enjoy order and discipline. I, en- I, I, I recognize discipline as an important factor in being an artist. It's not just letting it all hang loose and expressing myself and, you know, in a willy-nilly manner. I, I enjoy the work. I think you have to enjoy the work. Um. So, I, and I do. I'm, I'm inherently curious, I think, about things. I think that's, a, that's an important quality. And uh, I recognize that um, there's all the senses that we can enjoy in our bodies in this life, and I intend to make the most of them. <laughs> Is there ever a time when you get kind of dragged down by, oh, I've got so much to do. I've got to catch up on all of these emails. And there's this concert I need to prepare for. And then I'm going to have to gather up my suitcase for the 9,000th time and get on a flight and so on. I mean, do you get in that kind of frame of mind much? Never uh, about that. Never about the work. Wow. No, no, no. No, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, organizing my day or my week to to accommodate all the different things that I have to do. I I, I enjoy the challenge of that uh, very much. Where I get dragged down is the realities of our business and the realities of our world. <laughs> that's that's what uh, brings me down. And and you know the law. Lo- I've I've endured a little bit too much loss. I think in the past couple of years, mm. and that's a, a that's like been a staggering like kick in the stomach to to truly go through the mourning process uh, for my mother who passed away and my best friend Tim. You know, a double blow, and not even counting Dr. Steve Zagree, who was a dear friend, yes. Lou Soloff, who was a dear friend. You know, uh, there it's just too much lately. So, I I feel that too. There has been people say, "Oh, it's it's your age group." You know, no, like, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. No. I just think we had a, a rough year, yeah, or it's, two the it's last been a rough, couple of years. Rough patch. 
Do you uh, want to share any memories about Tim or talk about what your friendship was like or what it was like in the beginning? Absolutely. Um, he was one of the most amazing people I ever met. That's for sure. Uh, the, the quality that I remember most and I cherish the most is his generosity, creative generosity. His, his enthusiasms were so infectious um, and he taught me so much about music, certainly. I mean, I was, I was, when I met him, I was singing country and western music and bluegrass and, and my own original compositions and rock, rock and roll and R&B, and I was playing the guitar, and I was a hippie girl, you know. And I did not know about, I was a listener of jazz. I liked John Coltrane and Vera Sanders and, monk and I liked this mo modern free jazz and I was attracted to that energy but I didn't know anything that came before Coltrane. <laughs> That's so interesting because you're you're in the like 0000, 000, 000. 1 percentile <laughs> like of someone that doesn't know anything much about jazz but really likes Pharaoh Sanders. That's yes, I didn't unusual. I was attracted to the expertise and the expression and the freedom that those those uh, records provided and and I mean when I was in high school I went to see Nina Simone a lot uh, but I I was I like a I liked folk music really and um, you would hear in those days though you would hear Dave Brubeck on the radio you know Take Five was a big jazz hit you'd hear cer certain things and I was attracted to that uh, but I wasn't singing it. Um, but when I met Tim, I was, he just opened up all these other worlds to me, certainly of music and also of art, fashion. Um, he introduced me to his sister, Fayette, who was an original member of the Coquettes. And so I got exposed to all that, that, that true freedom of artistic expression and, and um, it just opened up my mind completely. And um, that's, uh, I miss that every day. You know, I miss, I mean, if Tim were around today, I, I miss his, I, what his commentary would be on the state of this election, for instance. I mean, I, I just uh -huh. miss that so much. Oh, uh, you know, I remember when we were working on Chick Corea's songbook, and we were in the studio and different people had different schedules and things. But I remember when your son came to visit and it was a priority that Tim come to the studio, pick up your son and take him to a Dodgers game. Yes, uh, they were close. They were very close. I mean, Gabriel was devastated when Tim passed because he and Tim shared a lot of interests. Um, Baseball was one, uh, also history. My son is a history major, and Tim was a Civil War expert, you know, so they'd talk about that, and they were, they were close. And music, Tim would, oh, Tim was so supportive of Gabriel, had him on stage doing a duet with him. I mean, there's footage online, I think, of, of Gabriel <laughs> putting on a, a bald wig, and getting on stage with Tim and singing uh, <laughs> Eddie Clean had Vincent's uh, um, blues about being bald. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. That's really cute. Well. Folks call me Daddy Cleanhead because I'm bald on top. <laughs> That's adorable. Well, I kept, um, I kept Tim's photo on my desktop for six months or something and I you know obviously I wasn't that close to him but I knew him and yeah powerful powerful person in so many ways and um, I miss him too yeah in my own way yes so. but um, thanks we move on it's part of the cycle well we have to well what is the, what is the alternative was the question I asked myself <laughs> I still t I still speak to Steve's agree 
all the time too. Oh I, yeah, I just talked to him. Yeah. As as a matter of fact, I'm going to be singing at a uh, benefit on this Monday night in New York for the victims of the Kalamazoo shooting, uh, which has been organized wow. by Nat Zagree. Oh my gosh! So I'll That's be seeing great. him. And Nat Zagree is is Steve's son. Yes. Just you know to clarify for everyone listening, and he's in New York right now, and he's a a songwriter and. And he plays piano. He rhyme, he's a little bit of a Justin Timberlake ish artist. Absolutely. Yeah. And he, he even looks like he him does. all. Yeah. And he's very, very, very talented. Um, so, you know, when we were working on the, the CD, the Chicoria Songbook from 2009, it's been a, a lot of years now, but I got a chance to see how you guys work in the studio. And, um, you and Cheryl always wanted to record together. Yes. And you, you seemed to play off each other. You were joking. It was light. It moved fast. You were not going to allow for slowing down and bogging down and getting serious. You needed to keep it light and fresh. And you were sort of a one-take wonder. <laughs> um, you're an awesome singer, Janice. And you've, you could, can cover so many different styles. And... Um, I don't remember you doing anything in more than two takes. Well, to be honest, I love the studio. I, I could spend the rest of my life in the studio. That's my favorite place, my happy place. And uh, I've been in the studio since I'm 12 years old. And I love it. I, I love it. I look at it as a, another instrument. And uh, to me, that's a place of creation. Can you share with people and give, give everybody a little bit of insight into how much study and practice of vocal technique you've done and or what kind of mindset you get into when you're singing in the studio? Okay, two different questions. <laughs> okay. Um, vocal technique, uh, I did not start studying vocal technique till 1980 when I was starting to get into a lot of trouble because I had no vocal technique and we were we were hitting it hard on the road and I felt like you had to give a thousand percent every night which I did without technique and also not getting any sleep and doing all kinds of other um, inappropriate things and uh, <laughs> and you were singing some some b big um, big numbers shouted yes. out tunes yes. like uh, Ray's Rock House An operator, operator. Yeah. Um, every night mm -hmm. yeah and there's a lot of energy that was being expended without the proper technique and I I just in 1980 I was smoking cigarettes too I think um, and uh, so in 1980 I stopped everything um, and I started studying with a guy named Roland Wyatt who taught me among other things the idea that you don't have to give a thousand percent every night every song, that you can learn to modulate yourself in a way that doesn't cheat the audience, but in, in a way that where you preserve and you conserve your voice. I also learned to relax a little bit <laughs> when I'm singing and breathing, of course, and just a little bit of, of proper technique. And I, I still study to this day with a wonderful teacher named Joan Later. I've had great teachers in the past. Um, what is her last so, name? Later, L A D E R. Joan Later. She's awesome. And she and Roland are both New York. Roland based. has passed away, unfortunately. Um, I used to study with him in, in L A. Um, I also studied with Robert Edwards in mm -hmm. in L A. And uh, in New York, I studied with um, well, Joan. Joan is my is my rock. Really, she's she's amazing because she. She knows the pathology of. The, I mean, she knows the how the voice is produced, and she works with actors. She works with people with actual problems, you know, like nodes and nodules. And uh, I mean, I never know who I'm going to see when I walk in there. One time it was Har Harvey Firestein. One time it was Madonna. One time it was, you know, um, uh, all kinds of Broadway people go to her and Diane Reeves is the one that really turned me on to her so hmm. she's she's amazing mm -hmm. so I still study because I think it's still valuable for someone to watch you to look at you and tell you 
and he- she helps me with choices. That's that's where she's just invaluable to me because in the different kinds of music I sing, the Brazilian music calls for a certain kind of technique, I believe, to make the music authentic. Uh, there's not a lot of vibrato. It's very gentle. It's very soft. It's softer kind of technique. Um, Plus, there's things that happen with the language difference of singing in exactly. Portuguese, right? The resonance yes. that changes. Exactly. Where can I put the sound? It goes up more into the mask in so, on some uh, on some level uh, for some of those sounds. Um, but yet, I still want to have the breath to uh, keep keep a phrase going if I want to. Um, and then with the Bernstein stuff, it's more legit singing, really. It's more uh, Broadway kind of singing. And then the transfer requires me to be the alto and learn harmony parts and also sing some of those leads that you mentioned before, uh, especially in the stuff we're doing with Take Six. Um, you want to you talk about that just for a sec so people know that situation? Well, we're doing we're, the transfer is doing a, a group, a, a, some combined shows with take the incredible take six. We're calling the summit, and it's uh, as we're doing these shows more and more, we're getting more and more integrative. So we're doing stuff together that's new, and and also we're doing a lot of audience favorites. You know. For, I'll just give one example. Um, Take Six is doing Killer Joe with us, so they're the they're basically start off being the band, and then we're doing all the vocalist solos and a lot of the background parts, and we end with scatting. You know, I mean, what a thrill to to improvise with them too. You know, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's a great show, and we're going to be doing much more of it uh, come the fall and into 2017. That is so. so fun, and I went to one of those shows in L.A. recently. Well, I guess, I don't know, six months ago or whatever that was, but um, the, it was electrifying. First of all, the show was supposed to start at 8, and it didn't start until 9 because there were so many people trying to get in. The line was way down the block, you know, and it took a long time to just get the place as to, to full capacity and get get everybody seated and so on, and it was just... Um, all every vocal group person in town came out <laughs> to to hear it, and it was just fantastic. I think that was one of the first so, uh, shows we did, though. Wow, it was it was early on. I think it was yeah. very early. It might have been the first or the second. Yeah. But but as we're doing it more and more, and we have a little bit more, we 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 squeeze a little rehearsal time here and there. We're trying to work up, for instance. Here's here's an interesting section. It's almost like a battle of the bands. We took like two or three of their tunes and and arranged them in our style, and they took two or three of our tunes and arranged it in their style. You know, just little snippets, not not the full uh-huh. tunes, but that you know. is so fun. I mean, would you love to hear Take Six sing Operator? Yes, <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> and I'd like to hear you guys sing Spread Love. Well, we will be. Uh, I, I actually wrote a little 16 bars of that. Oh, cool. We haven't gotten to it yet. but Super fun. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I think of you um, outside of your music career, I, of course, think of someone that loves uh, the outdoors. I think of someone that loves travel, you know, regardless of the fact you're doing it for work. I think you do it for play sometimes and uh food food (laughs) glorious food right i know you're a you're a chef i'm an avid cook an avid cook absolutely and we see your facebook posts of of different restaurants you're going to all around the world (laughs) or just in our hometown somewhere usa and some cool hoagie that you're eating or you know whatever what was that philadelphia Oh, uh, the greatest sandwich in the world. You mean the one from um, the market that was roast pork, broccoli rob? Yeah. I think I had it for breakfast. I, I mean, remember, I'm from California, so I don't know about those oh, East honey. Coast things. It's okay. <laughs> 
Thank you. I'll try to, you know, improve. And then there's the Philly cheesesteak, you know, the fame, the iconic. I think it might have been that that you mm. were eating, and it looked to me like the unhealthiest food I could possibly oh, imagine. Possibly is. It possibly is. Um, but I'm actually doing, um, I've been doing some demos for a combination food, travel, music show for. Um, for either cable or the internet, something like that, hmm. called Follow the Music. And it might have been from that uh, shoot. Okay. There's also the Miss Edie uh, <laughs> character, your your muse. Yes, um, my alter ego, my, my, mm -hmm. I, my nom de plume. <laughs> yeah, Miss Edie Gourmet. Miss Edie Gourmet <laughs> is a, a part of um, Janice's website um, that is uh, basically a blog right? Yes, yes, yes. Where she t talks about uh, travels through the world and, and uh, uh, from a food perspective. Yes. And what do you do when, when you need to relax and um, take some time, some downtime? What do you do? Hmm, downtime. What's that again? Uh, I love, I love the desert. To me, the, the uh, openness and starkness of that that natural scenario really relaxes me. Also, uh, coupled with hot water, a lot of times in the desert you'll find these hot springs and stuff like that. Oh, that's right. So All really the relax. Eastern I, like, Sierras. I like to travel still. I, I mean, I, traveling to me is both relaxing and stimulating. Also, you know, in the, I live in New York City, and I, I'm a native, so I actually find it relaxing here. <laughs> You know, I know how to relax here. Mm -hmm. We have the wor world's best museums and um, and the beautiful Central Park. And, and there's places, even though I've lived here all my life, that I still haven't seen or explored that are constantly changing. It's a great walking city. You know, I am such a lover of the desert also. Yeah. And uh, we're actually going on Tuesday to um, Anza Borrego. Where is that? It's um, it's east of here, about three hours, sort of by Temecula, a little bit oh, northeast yeah, of Temecula. San Diego. I know where that is. But it's famous for its spring wildflowers. Ooh, yeah. Is and that happening a, soon? It's it happens in yeah February or oh, March, and there beautiful. are there's a wildflower hotline that you can call oh to find out, and a website you You're can find out the that? status. I yeah we do it uh, all all the time. I mean, there's usually a fall desert trip and a spring desert trip, and I'm um, the happiest person in the world out in the desert camping, and away from campsites. That's what some people haven't yeah. uh, experienced in life yet. But if you can go to remote camping places and bring all your mo you know your best comfort foods, your your um, you know, your coffee in the morning, your glass of wine in the evening, if mm -hmm. you want, mm -hmm. and and have a, a tent, and it's quiet out there, and you bring a chair. It's so so quiet. Comfortable, oh, yeah. and you go hiking, you go exploring, and now we have a Jeep, so we go uh, off-roading and exploring cool things to petroglyphs, and oh, I mean, talk about relax. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful. a wonderful way beautiful. to get away. The natural world is... is, is uh, Thank God we we have so, so many beautiful places on this earth. We can only keep them. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. I sometimes think that I should go up to the Arctic Circle and go do some glacier popping before it's completely gone. And I am looking. I want to go to Antarctica. Do you want to go to Antarctica I do. together? Yes. Uh, I'll go. You know, for a second, I was trying to organize a jazz cruise store in Antarctica. I thought if I could organize this, maybe get some of my friends to perform and maybe have, uh, you know, food, uh, food, food lectures and vodka tastings or whatever and uh, art on the boat and go, go down to Antarctica with, with jazz fans who... Want to want to explore that and have na you know nature le lectures as well. Uh huh. If anybody's out there listening that um, can can help organize that, please contact Michelle. Please, that <laughs> sounds fantastic. Yeah, I doesn't jump. it? 
I would jump on that mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful uh, jazz festival. I was just in, doing some things, educational work at um, in Buenos Aires. Yes. Um, and well, you'd have to we go start all the way, there. You'd have to. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then launch and then go on your your jazz cruise after that. So started was, off with the tango. Yeah. In the and all that music, <laughs> incredible music, and then mm -hmm. go south. Yeah. So pick up the yeah. You have a whole pick up the tango artists th there, and then just go down. Sounds fantastic. Oh, there could be tango lessons. Yes, there could. There could be. Why not? Um, well, you're in luck <laughs> because you'll be the second person to have fun with the double time round of this podcast. <gasps> okay. <laughs> and uh, no one has died from it yet, so it's, you know, don't worry too much. I mean, worry a little bit, but, you know, you'll probably be okay. And uh, what we do is I ask you questions, and they are to go quick, and we try for quick answers, six seconds or less. And it doesn't right. really matter. It doesn't really matter if the answer is right or wrong. It's just like whatever. It's the lightning round. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like the lightning round, but it's music, so we call it the double time round. Nice. So we go. It's really more like the quadruple time round. But um, anyway, so get on your uh, your speedy hat and uh, just give me your first thought on these uh, questions. Ready? Ready. Here we go. What is your favorite color? Purple. What book are you reading right now? The Mayor. Who's the author? Uh, oh, God. What's her name? Mm. Too late. Mary, How Ga do you make Mary Gateskill. Okay. Mary Gateskill. How do you make a bechamel sauce? Bechamel. Bechamel. Bechamel mucho. <laughs> yes. Is flour, butter, and then you add milk slowly. Okay. What is the square root of pie? Oh, Jesus H. Christ. No. Okay, that's not the right answer. <laughs> what place in the world would you visit over and over again? Italy. Who was your favorite character in Star Wars? Oh, oh, I don't know. Han Solo. All right, all right, all right. Han Solo. What is the tritone substitution for a D dominant seven chord? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, that's, I like that answer. Um, and then, where is love, and does it fall from skies above? Oh, one of my, I may be singing that actually Monday night. Good answer. From Oliver. Okay, all right. Excellent. <laughs> you got 10 points. Yay. I give, you, I give you 11 just for knowing the bechamel. Thank you. Uh, answer and, the and singing song. the song. Yeah, yeah the bechamel song. <laughs> yes. Um, is there anything else that you would like to tell the world about, um, oh, maybe people that are, you know, becoming singers in their life, aspiring to be professional singers in vocal groups or, or arrangers or solo singers? Well, uh, I mean, the one advice I would give anyone uh, who is entering a, a career in music or especially wanting to be a singer is to listen. Listen, open your ears and listen to everything and absorb it without judgment. And um, I mean, I think that that's, uh, that's something I'd like to see entered into, uh, entered into um, syllabus, syllabi for, for jazz education is, is listening sessions. Um, and when I do master classes, usually there isn't enough time to uh, address that. I try and sneak one or two things in, you know, as, as an illustration, but I think to have a dedicated 75 minutes or something every week to listening to what's come before and analyzing it and talking about it and how does it make you feel and, you know, what, where, looking at the tree of how the music has grown, um, I think it's very, very valuable for aspiring Thank musicians. Thank you for that, and I'm so with you yeah. on that. Um, actually, later today, I'm going over to Bruce Rogers Festival at Mount San Antonio College, and I'm doing the improv sessions for groups for about four hours. Number one on my personal little outline is listen. And we're mm -hmm. going to just listen and do 
detailed listening because people are not used to it. They no, hear music not. in not the elevator things. in the grocery store and they don't know. They don't know, or especially young yeah. people, they don't know what to listen they for. They have no idea. And if we're going to have a future of, of people that appreciate jazz music, we need to teach them how to listen, how to appreciate art in, in a broader scope. Well, Janice, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, Michelle. It's a pleasure always to talk with you. I hope we, we can go on a hike soon. I hope so, too. Sooner than later. Yes, please just give me a shout when you're out on the West Coast, which is pretty often, I think. It's, it could be. Uh, well, if we start recording soon, it will be very often. Yes. <laughs> and then good. I would love to, to go on a hike. And if you come to New York... I know some pretty good hikes here. It would be through the concrete jungle, but still. That sounds fun. <laughs> I have spent, you know, I've spent a, lot, a number of times in New York hiking the island from north to south. Not all the way north, but starting like Times Square and mm -hmm. going down to, mm -hmm. to the hood down there to yeah. um, uh, the village. Yes. I don't know how, um, it took what, an hour and a half? That's or a couple something of like miles. That. Yeah, I mean, it's not that far, but yeah, but uh, fun. It is, is really fun. I it love is fun. Doing Go it. through the neighborhoods and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. Well, take care. Uh, best to you. Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at www.janisegel.com. Uh, the Manhattan Transfer has Facebook page, a couple of Facebook pages, and I have, uh, I'm on Facebook as well. Great. Well, um, super fun to talk with you. Keep up the uh, the fun activities. It's really um, enjoyable to keep an eye on what you're doing just just on Facebook and just see where's where's Janice now and what <laughs> is like she where's eating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, all right. Thanks, Michelle. You're very welcome. Hope to see you soon. All right. Likewise. Thanks for joining us for today's podcast, and please don't forget to subscribe. Visit www.nichemusic.com slash podcast for more info about today's guest and links to products and people that were discussed. See you next time.